Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm Spin Wang from Tetra Science. So as you can see from this picture, uh, what we are providing is a data integration platform for the life science R&D, essentially connecting uh, and extracting data from different data sources and different si data silos within life science R&D, uh, gather them, and then make them available to different uh, data consumers. So really kind of imagine this as a, as a highway system uh, for all of your data silos within your ecosystem. So some of the challenges, uh, a major challenge that all of us are facing is that a lot of the, uh, the data are produced in silos. They share different formats, they are produced by different vendors. Uh, the different softwares don't have standard API for them to communicate to each other. So what we want to provide is this uh, a seamless data flow such that the different silos can be merged together. The data can actually flow uh, from the data producers to the data consumers, and the data can actually go to the right places uh, as you want. So the offering that we're providing is an integration engine that is tailored for life science R&D, especially tailored to the life sciences uh, data sources and data consumers. On the left side, on the left side uh, we have uh, different kind of instruments. And also, uh, in uh, today's world, uh, increasingly more uh, research and development are being conducted by outsourced researchers, so your external collaborators, and of course, a lot of your enterprise softwares and databases. So this, data, this integration engine um, will be uh, collecting the data from different sources, normalize the data format, and then centralize it, and make it available via open API and open data format to the two different consumers. For example, your electronic lab notebook, your limb system, your visualization tools, your BI tools, and also the applications and data science that you want to um, develop yourself. So here are some of the use cases. I'll walk you some, through some of the use cases and then dive into the, the technical architecture. Um, this is a use case around chromatography. So we have been working with some enterprise farmer company to collect um, all of their chromatography data, uh, hundreds of uh, HPLC machines, protein purification machines, collect the data, normalize the data format, and then centralize that in our integration engine. What this does is to help the scientists to save their time um, instead of eliminate the manual process of exporting the data, export the right data, um, massage the data into the right format, uh, type them into Excel and perform analysis or use some other kind of software. So this saves their time and also uh, ensures better data integrity, especially in a uh, compliant environment, and also makes uh, scenarios like second uh, person review much easier to conduct. At the same time, what you're seeing on the on the, on the screen here are Spotfire dashboards that the customer built to analyze uh, all of their data, uh, all of their chromatography data. What you're seeing here is the, um, is the change of the chromatogram peaks. What you're seeing here are uh, different clusters uh, and also some anomaly. What you're seeing here are control chartings that previously the scientists have to um, manually gather the data and uh, plot in Excel. So what this, uh, this enables uh, analytics on a higher level such that the scientists can actually look at the message stability, batch quality, and so on and so forth. Here's a use case around bioprocess. Uh, in, uh, in the last uh, decade, there has been a lot of momentum around uh, large molecule protein-based uh, uh, therapy, and uh, a typical bioprocess workflow involves more than 10 or roughly 10 to 15 uh, types of instrument. You have shaking incubator, you have bioreactor, you have uh, osmometer, cell counter, uh, blood gas analyzer, that's on the upstream. And on the downstream, you have purification system, filtration system, uh, different kind of analytics machines. And currently, some of our uh, uh, partner, uh, customers are currently manually collecting the data from all those instruments, uh, printing receipt, uh, take a scan, and write it down on a piece of paper, and then go back to their lab and type that into uh, an Excel spreadsheet to perform uh, analytics and to generate a report. So the integration platform is able to uh, automatically collect all those data and also potentially leverage BI tools to generate a report uh, for the customers. Uh, this will help them to analyze and understand the different correlations of different parameters, upstream and downstream. And also, uh, another trend is that it is not only the instruments that are producing the data. It, there are a lot of CROs that are uh, contributing uh, to the data fragmentation and data silos. They are producing data and they are sending uh, Excel files uh, to some of the biopharma companies. So what we're providing in that case is to leverage the integration engine to integrate and detect changes 
uh, in Box or Ignite or some kind of file sharing system. It automatically gets uh, the file out, perform the data cleanup and also the parsing to standardize the data and centralize the data. This not only saves the time, ensures data integrity, but also via standardization and centralization of structured data allows um, some of our uh, early adopters uh, to push the data into their data warehouse to apply analytics and visualization tools. So here are some of the use cases that are hopefully will provide you a, a high level understanding of what, we, what this integration platform is providing. So here is the, is the technical architecture. So on the left side, uh, you have the data sources, uh, instruments. There are file-based instruments, or you can imagine those are CROs as well. You have software-based instruments uh, that, are, that won't necessarily produce a file, it has some kind of software interface. And also you have in software instruments that don't really produce file, nor, it, nor does it give you an API. So uh, in those cases, for example, balance and pH meters. So this entire architecture has uh, four modules, uh, data acquisition module, uh, data storage module, data processing module, and also a data access module. So the data uh, acquisition module, the key is a, some, is a concept called data hub. It is an agent, it is a hub that you can install in your local network. It, can, it, it contains uh, all the connectors tailored for different kind of connectors, uh, for different kind of data sources. For example, there's a connector that watches your directory there's a connector that watches your Ignite folder, a connector that watches your Box folder, a connector that talks to GE's uh, protein purification system, a connector that talks to water and power. So as you are adding more data into your uh, R&D, uh, there are connectors for you. Uh, there will be libraries that we're building out. Then there's the data storage module. Uh, it is built on Amazon, and I will uh, spend more time talking about it later. And then here's the data processing module, which is our data pipelines that takes incoming raw instrument data and turn them into structured data such that you're able to take some action. And in the end, you have the, uh, the data access module that opens the, uh, the data uh, to your software for you to consume. So the data hub is actually uh, built on uh, using a lot of Amazon services. So uh, the data hub was actually controlled uh, and activated by Amazon System Manager. Uh, it has an identity that is uh, issued by Amazon IoT to identify itself. And leveraging this certificate issued by Amazon IoT, the data hub is going to coordinate with the uh, key management system service and also identity and access management system to acquire uh, temporary access tokens such that the, the data hub is able to only upload data into a particular uh, object within S3 bucket. And this data hub, uh, all the connectors are built in um, using Docker, which uh, all the Docker images are saved within Amazon's Elastic Container Service. And as you are adding more data sources, uh, leveraging the system manager, we're able to push, help you, or allow you to push more data connectors into the data hub. And once the data gets into S3, which is the backbone of our data lake, it will issue certain uh, messages. It will be captured by a topic, SNS topic, which will then feed into SQS queues, which will then trigger our data pipelines to further clean up the data and standardize the data. So about our data lake, it is built entirely on top of Amazon S3. Uh, it is leveraging S3's uh, version control, encryption, and so on and so forth. But at the same time, all the files are indexed by Elasticsearch. At the same time, we want to maintain uh, the hierarchy and the folder structure of the data source. For example, there's a particular way you're saving your files in your uh, directory. There's a particular way you're organizing your files within Empower, within uh, Chromelian, within CamStation. They will be mirrored into S3 to offer a familiar uh, and contextual hierarchy. At the same time, uh, we're working on tagging the files. For example, based on where you save the files, currently this is a very common mechanism for R&D organizations to provide uh, important business-related metadata. The study ID, experiment ID, project name. Uh, for example, here I encoded my own name and also the time into this particular uh, folder path. We'll be able to extract those metadata and use that as tags uh, for the data lake. All right, data pipeline. So the data pipeline, one of its most important job is to standardize the data. 
we want to make sure we are providing uh, not only uh, access, access to the raw data, but also cleaned up and structured data. We're working closely with Alitro Foundation to, and also our uh, partners and customers to develop common data models for different kind of data types within the R&D uh, ecosystem. Uh, and also, we, will, uh, we are extracting the data from the vendor-specific format, formats into CSV files, JSON, Parquet, all those uh, standard and open format, such that they are not uh, no longer tied to the vendor that is producing the data. Another purpose of the data pipeline is to perform the ETL to push the data into uh, our uh, customers, our uh, customers' data warehouse or other uh, systems in this ecosystem, ELNs, LIMS, uh, and so on and so forth. And at the same time, it, is also, it can also be used to merge data uh, from different sources to enrich uh, the data coming from one particular data source. And lastly, uh, our goal for the data pipelines is to allow our customers, allow the biopharma companies to develop your own ETL process. Uh, so some of the features we're considering includes allow you to replay the data pipelines, allow you to aggregate all the logs from those ETL processes, allow you to debug them in real time such that you're able to add your own, uh, your own uh, data processing uh, scripts. All right, the last point is about data access. So it, the data lake has a RESTful API uh, for you to search your data. Uh, at the same time, uh, we are also providing a SENA interface for you to apply your BI and analytics tools via the JDBC connector. And lastly, uh, our philosophy and our vision is that uh, this is your data. So uh, we are offering an option to deploy the entire infrastructure within your Amazon environment. As a result, it is your S3 bucket. And because all the data is no longer vendor proprietary, you're able to access your data within your, ac within your S3 buckets uh, in the way you want it, and even trigger further uh, workflows. So as a recap, we want to build a data highway system that is connecting the different data silos. There are instruments, CROs, and enterprise softwares. Data flows through Tetra Science being cleaned up, standardized, and centralized. It then it flows to the right data consumers that you uh, want to use to process your data. Your ELN, your LIMS, your visualization tools, and also the applications you will be developing uh, to further understand the data. So with that, uh, just want to thank you uh, some of the uh, early customers who, who trusted us to uh, with their data to build out this data integration platform and also Amazon for their uh, helpful advice during the process. So we worked with one uh, enterprise pharma company. They have two databases. It contains similar data, uh, but inconsistent data. Uh, so uh, at this moment, as you, as you can see, this is a one-way arrow. We're not going back, reaching out to your data source and make changes. But we, what we did is to provide a visualization tool to highlight the data inconsistency or the missing data or orphaned data, such that our customers can go back and leverage their business process to uh, add the proper metadata. At this very moment, uh, we're not yet able to uh, reach out back to the data sources and make the changes. But we will make the data more actionable by suggesting uh, um, actions you can take. So you have to think of then updating validation steps to say, you have a valid yesterday, not today, because you have this. Yeah, yeah validation will be, uh, validation will be a, a piece of the integration engine, yeah. Your
Uh, yeah, currently the, uh, we are leaning more towards being more conservative and single organization oriented. Uh, but as more and more CROs are, are conducting the experiments and they want to see uh, the data, they want to see your comments on their data. So that is a direction uh, that we are considering and investigating to let um, the data being shared across multiple organizations. But that is currently not something we're able to offer. Yeah. Okay, one last question, this gentleman here. So does your uh, data evolution platform come with some sort of uh, data model that you map the data to various, it's like more of a well data model? Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so the connectors you have, you derive the connectors from the vendors or you have your proprietary connectors? Yeah. So most of the connectors we build are leveraging some kind of interface from the vendor. And then we leverage their SDK, their API, or their serial communication, or their original file specification to convert them into uh, a standard data model. And that data model was usually built with the customers, with the scientists, uh, collaboratively. Because we want to make sure the data model is able to, uh, is as consistent as possible across different type of instruments. They share the same common metadata across different type of instruments. At the same time, it is intuitive and makes sense. Uh, yeah. All right, thanks, Ben. Yeah.